to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Elisa Grayer joins me on the show today. And I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, this is a rare show. Elisa is here with us sharing her lessons in business, just like so many of our other guests have over the years. But this show is different. Often, one of our colleagues shares with us a hindsight lesson that they've learned. They've shared a low point in their career, possibly, that rocked them to the core that they weren't sure if they would overcome. But in our conversation, it has always been after the dust has cleared and the pain and the lesson was learned. Today, Elisa shares something she is knee deep in right now. Wait until you hear her story. After graduating from Amherst College with a BA in psychology, Elisa spent 10 years in the field of education and business, earning three master's degrees along the way. It took the joining of two individual apartments into one family friendly space to convince her to turn her passion for interior design into a business. She was then asked to oversee another major renovation project on the Upper West Side, and then her career began. To further her education, Elisa studied both at the New York School of Interior Design and Parsons School of Interior Design. Launched in 2001, Elisa Grayer created her namesake design firm and quickly became the go-to talent for young families transitioning from New York City to the idyllic suburbs of Westchester County. Since then, the firm has become known for its mastery in planning, design, and project management of grand estates, luxury apartments, and vacation retreats across New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Florida. Thank you so much to our show sponsor, Article.com. When your design calls for mid-century modern pieces for living room, dining room, offices, out and outdoor spaces, Article.com is your answer. Able to handle everything from one sofa for a single residential project to hundreds for a commercial project, Article can be your partner in getting what you want when you want it. Open your trade account today and see how Article.com can help you be the hero to your client. Go to Well Designed dot article dot com. Okay. That's well designed dot article dot com. All right. Looking forward to introducing you to Elisa Grayer. Hi, Elisa. Thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Hi, Luann. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. And I want to just share that um, I've been enjoying our pre-air conversation. You know, it's funny. So a lot of people, I never said this before, but a lot of people, when they're about to be on the show, they will email like literally like the day before that morning and go, I have no idea what we're going to talk about. How are we going to know? And I'm always like, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Don't worry. It's not a cold thing, right? Right. So we've just had a nice long conversation. And um, I've gotten to know a lot about your business and a lot about you. And I'm already going to give you a hashtag smart lady before we get even out oh, the gate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right back at you. Thank you. Um, um, but here's the thing. And I want to just also, I'm going to, I know by the time we're done, I'm going to thank you again. But you are going through a very unusual for you season in your business. But what I know is that it is not, it is not an unusual thing for an entrepreneur to face, let alone an interior design entrepreneur. You've been in business 19 years and you are accustomed to running gross revenues of two to $3 million, at least in the the recent years. Um, And this year you are year to date, you know, under 200 K. Okay. 
And yep, that yep, is yep. a very significant change in your business. And mm-hmm. having been in business more than three decades, I know that there's not a lot of sleep happening in your house. I'm surprised mm-hmm. there's any hair <laughs> left on your head. Uh, it's getting shorter and shorter and grayer and grayer. But right, take right. Care of that. But mm-hmm. the thing is that the, the story isn't a bad one because mm-hmm. we have talked about all of the things that you are doing and learning and growing through this experience. Experience. And what I know is that this is the conversation that most of our colleagues are not interested to come to have, to be the one mm-hmm. in the seat. But I do know that there are many of our colleagues that are in the seat, whether it's yes. this year or last year or it might be next year. And so mm-hmm. I thank you for being willing to share this information and to start this conversation with us like mm-hmm. right off the bat with this. Well, you're very welcome. I'm happy to talk about it. Okay. So, so here we are. So we are, um, you know, like the heebie-jeebies scared out of us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Right? And you have a team of six. Um, I also love that you know that my husband, the VIN man, calls it what's your your cost to be open number. And you know that number. So you're not even just, I wonder if I'm doing okay. (laughs) No, no. I'm getting my weekly numbers every week just like I'm supposed to. And it is not a pretty picture. Right, at all. Right, right, right. Since January. Right. Yeah. And so, um, well, you know, there could be a bigger conversation about, you know, why and what's happening mm-hmm. in the economy and the pipeline and blah, 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 blah. But let's mm-hmm. talk about the things that you've actually been going through um, in this last six months that you're facing mm-hmm. this challenge. And mm-hmm. and we'll get to some of the action steps that you're taking. And we're mm-hmm. also going to get to some of the lessons that you've learned. So where yes. do you want to okay. start it for us, Elisa? Um, let me start like a year ago, maybe, okay. um, where I was running four very large, very intense new construction, renovation, major home um, projects, um, in addition to all the other ones that we always have going on, which are you know a little smaller, one or two rooms, master bath, master bedroom. I had three employees at the time, myself included, so it was me. A uh, project manager and a junior designer. We also had a business manager, but she uh, became ill and had to leave. So I had no business manager. Um, and before she left, she wasn't well. So she was not really keeping up with a lot of business things um, mm. that were going on. So that was a very traumatic summer for me. Um, so I was really like head down into working and um almost almost out of my comfort zone with the with the amount of work that we were doing and but we were bringing in a lot of money and everything felt was really good and we were really happy I ended up outsourcing my business management um pretty quickly right away and that was an amazing thing that I did and I highly recommend that to Mm -hmm. anyone who works with studio webware it's a fantastic software program. Um, it does project management. It does everything that you want it to do. The accounting piece is really tricky. And everyone that I've ever hired, you know, just a lay person to do it, even though they say they have experience, it's it's really, they don't. They don't actually know what they're doing. So <laughs> it, it really pays to have someone who is, that's all they do, is studio webware, and they know all the ins and outs and all the tricks. But anyway, we're moving along. We're cranking along. It's summertime. And it's all good. Finish up the project, start to finish everything up and start to realize that there just isn't any really big new project on the board coming Mm. up Um, and things kind of keep going. And now it's fall. And I usually get just calls all the time. Just I'd never I had never done any marketing in my life. Um, I didn't really even know what that was. We sent holiday gifts out you know, to the clients and we would send like, you know, Valentine's Day presents and things, but I'd never connected with brokers or builders or, uh, you know, anybody um, as far as, you know, teaming up and being in business. So I just would get phone calls, either referrals from past clients or um, clients wanting me to do their second home after I'd done the first home, or I got a lot of calls just from Google. People would Google, you know, I'm in Rye, New York, which is a suburb right outside of New York City, and I would get calls you know, hey, I'm moving up from New York City. Um, Can you help me? And that's how I got all my work. So it starts to be the fall and I'm like, "Hmm," you know, da, 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 not a lot going on. Then it's November, then it's December, and then it's January. And I am 
kind of looking around. And because I was so busy before, um, I had hired two new junior designers. Um, and, and so now I'm up to, you know, I'm, my staff is growing. I'd replaced my business manager with an office manager. Um, and then my project manager left. So I hired someone else. I was just like, so now I've got six people working for me and I'm realizing all we have are the businesses that we, the, the jobs rather that we've been working on and they're kind of winding down and there is nothing new coming up. Mm-hmm. And I start to just get in this cold sweat. I'm like, what do I do? You know, how do I, I, I have never, I've never been in this situation in 19 years of business ever. And, um, or maybe, no, I never have. I mean, I've had years that where it wasn't, the business wasn't so great, but I've never had right. like nothing. Right. Um, so we still, I mean, I still have 10 jobs up on the board, but they, all those fees are all basically gone. You know, they all the design fees, they've all been paid and now it's just ordering and waiting to install things. Um, and I just, you know, I kind of, my heart rate went up. Mm. I'm like, literally I walk around checking my Apple watch because it's like 110, 199. And I'm thinking that's not, (laughs) but that is how I feel on a daily basis. It's like, it says on the watch exactly the way I I feel. (laughs) It's really stressful. So fortunately, um, I had started working with a business coach, um, trying to think I think in the in no not this this not this November but the November before so a year ago I had kind of started off with a business coach and um it was a great I had this VIP day where I went out to meet with her and she and I brought two of my team and she really dissected my business in a way that I had never ever had done before because I've always been just a designer who had a business. I'm that that idiot that you talk about on <laughs> podcasts all the time. I don't you think I use that book. word, Elisa. Well, no, I, the, the, uh, the naive yet you know, positive designer. I just was not focusing on the business aspect of my company because mm-hmm. I love the design so much. It's I love project management. I love my clients. I love the people aspect of it. I love the socializing with other designers. I love all that. Um, And I just had not been focusing on the business. So I met with this coach and she really basically ripped my company apart. And there were tears. There were moments where I just was like, I can't believe I hadn't thought of this or Mm -hmm. I hadn't been looking at it this way. Or look at all the money I left on the table because I wasn't charging enough for my time. I wasn't valuing myself enough Mm -hmm. um, to really make this business make me the money that it should be for the amount I'm working. Mm -hmm. Um, I provide an incredible amount of customer service for clients. I mean, we are, you know, bring your, we're the bring your toothbrush when you move in kind of people. We Mm. will do anything for you. Um, And that's all time that people, you know, people that work for me are spending, running around, you know, getting pillowcases pressed and, you know, picking up stuffed animals and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So anyway... Um, after I met with the coach and got involved with her, I was asked to join a group, a special group of designers. Um, it's called the boardroom and it is, um, a group of high earning designers and, uh, we're in a group of 13, um, or I'd actually, I can't remember how many, we are, maybe 16, something like that. Anyway, designers from all over the country and, um, it's been a fabulous support group and learning experience for me. And we have meetings. Um, it's all, this is all Gail Doby's mm-hmm. genius. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you know who she is. Sure. And so I just wanted to mention her name because she's phenomenal at looking at your business, understanding, you know, how to make it better, um, giving you tools. She's one of the most generous mm. um, people out there in terms of giving you the tools that you need to succeed and you know you can go to high point and listen to one of her talks and she'll hand out you know some of these documents that she gives us and I asked her once I was like why are you doing this like why are you you know you're not charging anything you're just giving them you know budget calculators and you know how to charge and her goal really is to elevate the whole industry so Mm. we're all sort of you know working from the same place instead of you know I know some designers who give their net pricing to their clients and that's how they sell themselves they're like you're going to get a big discount on your product so come work with me and that's not the way designers really should be working I mean they should be you know that that special net pricing is special for them and should not be shared with clients and it really kind of 
downgrades the rest of our of the design community when they do that. And I she agree kind with of, you 100%. Yeah, on that. so she wants to make everybody up there. So that's what she Good. does. And she has um, just provided me and everyone she works with with some incredible tools to streamline uh, the design business. So... Let me ask you a question here, okay? Yeah. Let me stop you for a second. Yeah. So, so yeah. here, no, so here's the thing. I 100% agree. I I know Gail Doby to be extremely talented business coach, and and you know have known many designers that have coached with her, and have echoed exactly what you said, and mm-hmm. you know giving and and laser sharp and all of those things that you said. Here's what I'm wondering though. Mm-hmm. So, because when you first said to me, you were telling the story and you were saying that, let me go back a year ago, a year ago, I'm running four very large, intense, full scale right. projects. Okay. And mm-hmm. this is what's happening. And then the fall comes and I'm not really seeing, basically, I'm going to paraphrase. You're not, you're, you know, you're a, kind of aware that there's nothing in the pipeline, but you're not really worried about it because you're also accustomed. You have 19 years where that phone's going to ring. So you're not worried right. about it. Then right. you wake up, it's January and you don't have it. And and mm-hmm. what I was surprised at, because there I was going to ask you, or there I was going to say, that was the first mistake right there, okay? Mm-hmm. However, I didn't cut you off, and you continue, and then you tell us that you're working with this mastermind, basically, group every mm-hmm. month for mm-hmm. the whole year previous to that. And so knowing how much I respect Gail, I'm wondering how that got missed by this whole thing right. is it you know what i mean well, because it was well, somebody should have been saying to, or was it you're not communicating and it didn't re, you didn't know yet to know what you you didn't know yes. yet what you didn't know exactly okay like, let okay me just say, that let makes me sense. Just, you know what i'm gonna look at my exact dates because um wait i need to get move you hold on because mm-hmm. i went to the my first retreat with this group so I'm saying a year, but maybe I am, you know, mm-hmm. you know how every day it's a year. Right. So, okay. So January 25th. Okay. So we're that already is, in trouble. Yeah. So yes. we're already in trouble in January. That's when I had, uh, that was our first boardroom retreat was in January. Wait, time out. January before the, when this the summer January. was, be- no, no, no. no, no. So, this okay. So then that makes total sense. So yeah. yes. Okay. So I, I almost thought that you were saying that you were together with them from, a year yep. before the okay. November when yep. thing. Okay. Yep. So now I, I understand because it was incongruent yeah. to me. That's like telling me yeah. something is purple, but I know it's green. And I'm thinking, I no, know, she's too know, brilliant know. to have let you go off the rails. You she know what was. I mean? Yeah. She is. Yeah. She is. Yeah. No, no, no. I hundred percent agree. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, but we know that is our first, that is our first thing is that if we're listening here to Elisa's story is that running and gunning, everything is so amazing. That's awesome. Um, but it's, it's September. September and we're just saying, hmm, don't really have another big project. It's October, mm-hmm. huh, don't really have another big project. We don't wait until January. That's, mm-hmm. we got to move then. We have to mm-hmm. make moves then. We have to, if yep. we don't know how to do marketing, that's when we do marketing. If we don't You're know right. how to do, you know, we, if we have to redo something on our website, tweak it, call out to our ideal client in a different way, that is the time to do it. So that's lesson number one that we're going to call out, yep. that we don't wait three, yep. four, five months. I mean, Vin waits a, no. about a minute and a half until we're off our numbers <laughs> oh, to God you know like I, and I've said this yep. on the show before and Alisa you're a listener so I know you know it uh-huh. we know our cost to be open number and we yep. also know our projecting our what we project in sales every mm-hmm. month okay every mm-hmm. year but every month and every mm-hmm. single day him and Kimberly look at those numbers and probably Rich and JC as well. But I know that him and Kimberly do. And every single day they will say, okay, it's June 20th and our goal for this month is you know 342,000 yeah, yeah, and we yeah. are at 62,000 and if we times that by another 15 days we are going to miss our goal by a gabillion yeah, dollars yeah, and then yeah. we all run the riot act we all run right. around and we all start getting That's all amazing. of our pre pre our you know we all start looking at each other you got anything cold yeah. you got a thing you can call out you got anybody you can follow up with we don't wait even until the right. month is bad right, right. right? Okay. So, That's so what I, need. Glad. I should have been doing that a hundred percent. I didn't even, I, the projection thing that it was something that was such a foreign concept to mm. me was to think about, well, here's May 20, you know, 18, what are you doing in 2017? And what are you going to be doing in 2019? I right. did not, right. that was just not on my radar right, um, right, like right. it is now. Right. So just to clarify, you, you are absolutely right to, to pin me down on that because my sense of timing 
is you know well, I, always I just think didn't want like it to be a year. reflection I think 1985 of her. was yesterday yeah but i yes, didn't want it to be a reflection of her i know her to be no, a, a powerful I, coach okay no, you're right so november so my first i think i first met her maybe in like september this of you know september 2018 okay yep november i had my like one-on-one thing with her And then, yeah, so it's been, it has not been that long. Okay, so now I want to compliment you then, okay? Okay. Because you start to feel the change in the climate in September, but Mm -hmm. you go and you meet her you know you you look into her maybe you've attended a live event with multiple right right and then you immediately do the vip day in november Mm -hmm. so this is a compliment to you because you didn't then say ah it'll be fine you already knew something wasn't fine you didn't know what it was and you didn't know how to deal with it but you were looking for solutions and answers already so good for you Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah. No, okay. no, no, no. Because, <laughs> because this is how were, people yeah. get lost in the weeds and all of a sudden the mm-hmm. business is closed because yeah. they pretend it'll be fine. Right. Mm-hmm. And it, and it might be, but that's no, not how you run wasn't. a business, especially when you've got employees. You know what I'm right. saying? It's like, hello. <laughs> but, but Right. But also the thing that was so cool about m- meeting with her was that I was not really aware of what kind of business uh, systems were available to me. I mean, I kind of knew I'd read a lot of books. I'd heard a lot of wonderful people speak, but I had never internalized it enough. I'd never been able to, you know, bring it back to my business. Well, and Um, it's what I always say too, right? Don't I say on the Mm -hmm. show all the time, did you learn something? Do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Don't just gloss over it. Somebody talks to you about a tool or, you know, whether it's my Doma studio or Sandra Funk wants to tell you about Asana. You know, if she's running her firm on it and she's successful, don't just go, oh, what an idea. Maybe I should. And then don't do it. You have to take the action. You have to. And it's all about being accountable, about making, setting yourself some goals, being accountable. Gail is all about that. She's Mm -hmm. like, you know, you write it down. You have your goals. You've got to, you know, create, go do it in baby steps, but you've got to get there. So. That's kind of, you know, I came back from both my time with her and then the boardroom group, the mastermind group, just feeling like I I have to do these things now because right. people are looking because, at you. <laughs> yeah. And business is, business, <laughs> but business is not so great. And so actually I have a little time. So that's kind of how it started. I'm like, you know, I have a little time to put Asana <laughs> into practice. I have a little time to get everybody up on Slack. I have a little time. So that's kind of how it started was the time, you know, it's just like I, I just was able to start getting everyone into these projects. And I am not in my company, we have, you know, we did the strengths finders mm. test and we did all these things. I am a, a, a not a um, implementer or whatever that is. Yes. That is not my skills. I am like the visionary. I am like the feel good person. I'm, you know, just that's, I'm the idea person. So right. I really needed somebody it, with me in my company to help. And I had that person. I had that, my second, my right hand person. Wow. That's amazing. Absolutely. When you find out you need it and you have it. Yeah. And so having her with me on this journey was just amazing. And she's, you know, she's fantastic. So perfect. Perfect. And I just want to say too, I also, um, understand that value of, um, not only the powerful coach that helps you, but also Mm -hmm. the group of like-minded yes. business owners, right? Yes. That's also important. It's it's mm-hmm. terrific to be with all types of uh, business owners, but it's very nice to be with business owners who are at your level and above. Yes. Right. hundred yeah. percent. So we 100%. have that with window works. We're a part mm-hmm. of exciting windows. And, mm-hmm. the, you know, people say to me all the time, like, why are you in exciting windows? You know, like you guys are doing three million dollars a year. And, you know, do you really need it in your business? Almost 40 years. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know what I love about exciting windows that I have uh, conversations every month with people that are doing 10 million dollars in window treatments. Right. Right. Like, Ten million dollars in window treatments. So like much. the average you, sale is eight thousand yeah. dollars. Think about that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, no, that's so amazing. yes, that's you insane. rub elbows with people who are at your level and higher so that you can learn the things you didn't even know you didn't know. Right. Exactly. And I, boy, did I learn some of those and just talking to people 
at my level and saying and hearing how they run their business, that is fascinating because I did not, when I started my career, I did not start out working for anyone, which has always been my greatest sadness because I never mm -hmm. had that experience of being mentored and being, mm -hmm. you know, shown how everything works. And I, I did it all myself. It was very organic and that's why I made so many mistakes and mm -hmm. I learned or I tried mm -hmm. to learn from my mistakes, mm -hmm. but I find that having a group of people that you can say, Hey, you know, what's your maternity leave policy like, or how are you, how are you handling, you know, uh, vendor increases and, you know, just anything that anything. you, you need yep. to know. Yeah. Um, and they tell you, and that's, that's right. what's so great. It's it really is. Great it's time. awesome. So now move us to, um, we're still in crisis mode. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a positive outlook, you have a support system, you have mm -hmm. valuable information at your fingertips, um, mm -hmm. but it's still crisis mode. Okay. It's not like we're talking about this next year and you're like, and then I pulled it out and did, you know, yep. 2.5, no, no. right? I'm still here. I'm yep. still in exactly. crisis mode right, right You yep, got yep, the, yep. the duck with the feet under the water, you know, moving <laughs> like crazy pants, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> But so tell us some of the things. Now, we I, I understand what you're doing is you have taken a breath. You have time to take a breath, and that's the tiny bit of silver lining. It's very stressful. No one's going to underestimate that the numbers are not there, and so that's stressful. But you're not sitting there crying in a puddle of mud about it. You are saying, okay, I don't have 16 you know, projects that I've got to do on, so let me get my Asana up and let me get my systems in order. So what are some of the things that in addition to to getting yourself organized and streamlined. What are some of the lessons that are coming out of it, Elisa? What are some of the challenges mm -hmm. coming out of it? Mm -hmm. um, one of the lessons um, that I know probably most designers have learned is that you need to be marketing your services all the time. And that as a business owner, that has to be, you know, a big chunk of your of your of your week. You have to be out there networking, meeting people, connecting with people that can give you business, doing things for people that could give you business. Um, it's not just a sit back and wait kind of thing anymore. Um, you know, it's a very crowded field. And on the internet, you know that funny cartoon? Um, it's from The New Yorker. It says on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. Have you see, ever seen that one? No. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. It's two dogs sitting at a computer terminal and they're like, hey, 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 on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. <laughs> and so it's great. It's Perfect. And that is actually what I feel like has started to happen out in Westchester County. Everyone has a website. Everyone's website looks beautiful. You know, people can make a beautiful website for not much money. And so it's very hard to differentiate yourself as a firm. There's a lot of things popping up in Google now. It used to be just me. You know, I had the website. And so it was easy to, uh, to find me. But now... Um, everyone has one. And so you kind of have to be uh, more proactive. I cannot just sit back and let the phone ring. So I actually am what, what, what do you call it? An extroverted introvert. Like I, I don't like, you know, walking up to somebody and saying, hi, you know, I, I, can you, do you have any jobs? <laughs> And you don't like doing that, really? No, That's so strange because the rest of no, us no, love no. it. <laughs> oh, my God. Nobody likes it. And there are – but there are some very nice ways that you can do it. Um, and Gail is all about, you know, finding those ways where it's really about creating a partnership and what can I do for you yeah. and how can we work together. Um, sending out letters to clients, you know, you were a, so fantastic to work with. I'd love to, you know, have another client like you. Do you have any, you know, friends that you think might be interested? I mean, just all of that stuff, having lunches and coffees and just reaching out to the, the existing clients because those are your most. Um, That's your gold. That's your goal. That's yeah. the, be the best return on your investment is reaching out to them. Exactly. Um, Selling more to do things to the same people. Because they already know you, they already right. like you. And accessing um, them, that they can yeah. be your advocate. So get me a little bit of boots on the ground there with that. So because there's people yeah. going, okay, what do you mean going to places? So we're talking about, um, let's. Th there's two avenues here. We're talking about joining groups, whatever it is. Let's talk about what that actually means. And then talk to me about 
look, I have a feeling that I know like Fred Burns says the same thing, you know, meet your existing customers, clients, ask them if they have friends. And most people look at me and say, I'm not doing that. Like I'm not doing that. So I would love to know, have you done it? And mm -hmm. if you have it, what's your tweak on it since that is the advice from the coach? So which, which one do we want to handle? Um, well, let's, let's, a couple things. One thing that I have been working on a lot is re not rebranding, but just kind of creating a consistent look and a consistent brand. And as part of that, I have put together, um, these box, like these very pretty boxes in this gray blue color with my, you know, name and white on the cover. And inside I have put, um, you know, little bags of goodies and, you know, for brokers and stuff, brochures, but basically what I'm doing with those, this is not clients. This is now going to brokers. I've written a very nice letter for real estate brokers who mm -hmm. are a huge source of clients um, and have walked in, have met them, have had a conversation with them, have handed them, you know, these boxes. And inside the boxes, I have put um, my brochure and also some gift certificates for them to give to special clients that they like. So I'm allowing them to give a gift mm. um, to a client, you know, because clients always say, oh, do you know any interior designers? And now they can say, yes, I do. And I'm going to give you a gift of two free hours um, of her time because you've been such a great client. So oh, okay. I'm trying to make them, uh, you know, feel like they're going to get something out of this. And I have also told them that I will come and help them if they have any, you know, sometimes it's hard to see a room, um, how it could be. And I will help them by coming to uh, draw a floor plan up for them and give it to them so they can then say to their client, here, look, this is how you could lay out your family room furniture if you wanted to because you can't really see it. It's an empty room right now, you know, whatever. Right. I, I'm trying to find ways that I could help brokers. Um, as far as – and architects, they did the same thing. With, they don't need me to do floor plans, but, you know. Right. Um, I have gotten in touch with a number of clients and have said, hey, you know, I – never i know that i never finished you know we never finished accessorizing your blah 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 your living room your study um i'd love to you know i've got some openings in the schedule i'd love to get that done for you is there anything else that you might need some help with you know any other rooms and so i kind of have through that have done a bunch of more more work not big work but you know some more work with clients and then have said to clients, um, you are, you know, you were so fantastic to work with. I really, really loved it. If you ever have anyone like you, um, you know, please give them my name. I would, I would love it. I'd be so happy because it just was, you know, such a highlight to be able to work with you. Something like that. Okay. Um, Let me take some of these apart. Okay. okay. So, so for instance, I just want to recap. I love the idea of the architects and the realtors. And I love the twist that you've got on it is that you are we we often talk about go in and let the realtor know like i could do two free hours or i could do this or i could do that but you're pre-packaging it so the gift mm -hmm. is what if, if i understand you correctly the gift is for the realtor but the actual presented gift is a gift that the realtor gives their client so you're saying i've already given you this beautiful box this beautiful with treasure. food by the way there's with... candy popcorn and food in it because everybody loves that okay from, and so, from our local store right yeah. and so you're not saying hey realtor open this up and eat this candy you're saying hey mm -hmm. realtor when you close your your next project you mm -hmm. can give my gift as the housewarming gift or part right. of whatever exactly. you get exactly okay exactly if you're putting a basket or something you can just throw Love it in it. there and so how has this ha, have you done this two times five times has it has you have you gotten i because have you gotten a return on it yet or we're still waiting for the first magic moment to happen from it we are still waiting i have okay. met with the, the realtors and they one of them one of the big brokers in town was like oh my god i always forget about you i definitely have to recommend Say, you i'm like yep. yeah yeah and then another one said oh yes 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 you know i just i'm gonna give this to my client who just moved into blah 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 when another one oh i just sold this house and they were asking me i'm gonna give them so i've gotten very positive mm -hmm. responses from the brokers but i have not yet gotten that phone call okay but that's okay but because it it's coming at any it's time. coming yep. i know it's coming because I that sentence right there oh my god i always forget about you yep. that's so yes. true i know it i know so true 
So you have to and keep top of mind. And so you do, do you do you bring them a couple every month and say, here I am again, I'd love to give you some more? Or do you do something different the next month and just get, bring them maybe brownies or something for them? What are you doing? Well, that's that, those are all good ideas. What I have done <laughs> is <laughs> I actually email them um, all, each separately. Um, and I said, hey, you know, I'd love to treat you to breakfast to show you up in my office to show you a little bit more about how we could work together um, and how we work with clients because the one thing that does differentiate me in my particular area my neighborhood anyway my town um, is that I'm really the only one that has a big group it's everyone else is like one person you know sole proprietor two one or two maybe three working together but we have a kind of a bigger operation and I would love them to know um, what's available and what we have. You know, we are just on top. We have accounts with every furniture company because I can't stand going through a rep. I'm too much of a control freak. We, we're just on top of everything. Okay. And I would love these brokers and architects and builders to see, you know, who they're recommending, actually. It's mm -hmm. not just a two-second conversation and I'm working out of my garage. It's like, no, I'm right here on the main street in town and I have, you know, a lot of space and these people sitting in the office you know, all day long working. And have any of them taken you up on that yet? One of them has. Okay. Um, and I'm waiting to hear back from the others. And if I don't hear back from them, I will send it out again or I'll right. drop off something. I mean, I get it. Everybody's busy. Um, and people don't like to go out of their offices right. sometimes. We had a guy call today to, from a cabinet company. He wants to treat us all to lunch. And, and you're all like, forget it. I don't want to go, yeah. right? We're like, no. We're That's going. how I am. It's I'm like, I don't want to do yeah. it. Oh, not Luann, I would it. love to do I, it for you. I Thank you. Just the thought is enough. Yeah, no. Sorry. I know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, write his name down. He sounds like a nice guy. But this town, though, is a walkable town, and all these brokers' offices are literally – 200 yards from mm -hmm. my office mm -hmm. so it's not like they have to get in their car and they have mm -hmm. to drive it they if they wanted to come for a coffee or a breakfast or whatever we're not that far away right but I and do so understand and so issue. I could see that being um, more valuable with the architects builders right mm -hmm. because they really you know are for an architect or a builder to truly envision your process is probably mm -hmm. very uh, valuable to them whereas a realtor I could they could almost be like look once I give you the recommendation I don't yeah, care how don't you run care. it I'm exactly. like whatever no, it's true. You're right. <laughs> right you seem like a nice person okay <laughs> whatever you gave me a gift a gift and la 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 yep, yep, but yep, so but to your point though is that and 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 I should say just before I finish that point is that is to do what is valuable to that person. So to keep right. trying exactly. to get someone to come to breakfast that really doesn't want to don't come want to, to breakfast, exactly. it's, it's, it's silly. Small. But, and I get that because I'm that girl too. It's like, this mm -hmm. is the work day. You know, at eight right, o'clock, right. I will have fun all damn day with you, right? right I right, will right. laugh and we will have wine right. and we will have a great time. But until then, I got stuff to do. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? I know. And I'm not interested. I'm not going to spend my time with you. Exactly. I know. I, but I totally that it. doesn't mean that I don't need to be reminded of you. And mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that I don't want to be reminded of you. And it goes to what I often say when we talk about sales and the technique of sales and when you are trying to build a relationship with somebody that could possibly be a two win you know a two way street a win win right. is no isn't no Right. You know, no, I mean, I know. Exactly. like, like, or no answer isn't no, like just, exactly. it's, it's like, I'm too busy. It's right. Yeah. Just hit me again another day. Right. And so right. I love I mean, this, I, I, like this, you know, this, it's a courtship. It's first, it give is, me this little box is. to give to my thing. Then, you know, maybe the next month you send me, you know, brownies or cookies just for mm -hmm. me. And right. then the third month you might say, you know, I thought you might need a couple of more gift boxes. Right. You know, exactly. here it is. Exactly. And, and now really they're going to remember. You. What I can do for you, you know, it really can't be like, when are you going to give me a job? Right. That's like the kiss of death. It's like, well, here, how can I make like your life better? And, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and it just really is about getting them at that exact right moment. Right. And the other thing, too, is, you know, you have to understand everybody is, has got their own drama happening in their head. So yeah. you might on a first meeting with a realtor say, and by the way, another way I'd be happy to serve you is if you're having a hard time selling a house and you really think you feel like it is ever all the all the things are right for the particular client. But maybe they're just having a hard time visualizing how they're going to fit, you know, three cats mm -hmm. and two dogs and six kids in this family mm -hmm. room to watch a movie um i'd be happy to do a floor plan for you but you yeah. see yeah. The, but what i'm saying there is 
think about them. If you tell them that on the introductory meeting, right? And how likely forget. are they to take you up on that? So true. You see what I'm saying? Because so they're going to yeah. feel like, I can't ask her to come right. out and do this. Right. But if you've been coming in once a month and you've been creating a little friendship, now mm -hmm. maybe by the fourth or fifth time, they feel like, you know, I can ask Elisa to do that now. Right. I don't feel icky about it. Right. Also, what if in the next box I include like a floor plan sample? Like, here's what <laughs> we do. You go. <laughs> here's what I could give you. You see? I, mean, I just love so it. They know. Right. I but know. I, I mean, I just, we, we have to always remember the other person's position just because somebody tells me, like, if I understand as a rational human being the value of a designer doing a floor plan, plan for me, how oh. easy am I going to take them up on that free offer? Not so easy. Not so yeah. easy until I feel like maybe there's a relationship, right? Yeah. And that doesn't yeah. mean there isn't the realtor out there who will do it. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But most mm -hmm. of us are going to be like, well. Oh, yeah, I can't do that. No, 100%. Funny. I agree. You know? It'll take some more brownies yes. before they feel like so, they, can, uh, they can actually do that. Well, I just, it takes but, more relationship, right? It takes yeah. more mm -hmm. conversation where I really go, she's dead serious. She will yeah. come in here, not expect a single dime right. from me, and she right. will do this floor plan for me. This is right. awesome. She's my yeah. friend, and let's go do this, yep. you know? So, okay. And then, so, so now let's go back to when you have been you know, like Candy Scott calls it, uh, you know, dialing for dollars, right? So on Friday, mm -hmm. she dials for dollars. And so when yes. you go back to your previous client list and you say, hey, how are you, yada, yada, and we never did end up doing the accessories in your living room, would you like to think about doing that? So mm -hmm. a couple of things. In having done that, whether you've done it once or you've done it five times, have like what do, you're out of the blue you're calling somebody out of the blue i know right. all of our colleagues are thinking i'm not doing that <laughs> like i'm not you know doing what? that i have to tell you i don't call because i'm just i that okay, i, so we I email. have to get over that but okay so i will either write them a note a handwritten note like that or or if it's a client that i you know know really well and we have like a texting relationship i'll send them a text and i'll be like hey you know i'd love to catch up my clients, by the way, are not mostly are not working. And so they're yes. like, they're like, sure, I'll have breakfast. Like, why not? Like, they have nothing else to do. So, After tennis yeah. and before my nails. Yeah, exactly, so sure. Exactly. So they're like, yeah. I mean, some of them do work, but that most of them are very happy to get together. And, you know, what it's like when you work with someone so closely for a year, year and a half, you, they feel like your best friends. And then when you don't see them and they don't see you, they're like, oh, I miss you. What, you know, what happened? Okay. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I moved on we're, we're our relationship is done, but it never is really done. So right. it's very natural to say, Hey, let's get, you know, I haven't seen you in a while. Let's get a cup of coffee. You know, when can, when can I take you out for breakfast? And that has worked every single time. And oh, every time okay. I've done that, they have been like, yeah, I want to do my baby's room or yeah, you know, we're building a house in the Hamptons and we knocked down the house. We're waiting to get it, you know, the walls up and then I'm going to call you. And I'm like, okay, that sounds great. Okay. Um, so all that's good. It just hasn't, still and I, I'm still at that place where you know it's like zero money coming in or very little money mm -hmm. coming in and so that has not come to, I'm not it's, it's not helped me be where I want to be and I'm just going to say yet because I you know there's six months left in the year mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. you know who knows anything can happen but, but see but, so this really does express uh Candy Scott's point though mm -hmm. because she does it every Friday Okay. And that's Every what single Friday, uh, month yeah. in and month out, whether she's got $10 million on the books or $1 million on the books or, uh, you know what I mean? And that is exactly the lesson in the dialing for dollars. Now you are, you had to get all the way to the come to Jesus moment, right? Yeah. To understand that, too. whoa, what worked for 19 years isn't necessarily working just this one. It's just this one calendar year. I'm a hundred percent sure right. that you're going to bounce back. You're too intentional about it. You're too willing to seek help and to ask your colleagues and your coach what to do. And you do the things that they're suggesting you do because there are people, I've coached them, oh, that won't work for me. Oh, okay, sweetie. It works mm -hmm. for the rest of us, but not you. <laughs> Love but you're it. special. So it's not going to work for you. Love that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I know, know I that know. this is a blip in time, but the lesson yeah. that you want to take from it is you're building this skill now of rainmaking. 
right? right. You're building it and you're flexing this muscle. And it's yes. no different than learning to run a marathon. It's like the first five or six, you know, days are brutal and the first mm -hmm. five or six weeks are brutal. And then mm -hmm. you have a little honeymoon period where you're mm -hmm. feeling great. And then you right. got to run the darn race and it's brutal again. all over again. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, what would really help me? Because you're so right. I, I went through this whole like happiness that I'd actually gotten myself to, to get out there and meet these brokers and architects and, you know, called the clients. And then I just was like, patted myself on the back and I went back to work <laughs> doing design, which is what I love to do. Nope. And that was my mistake. So the way to get around that, which I am starting to implement is really to do uh, time blocking on mm, your schedule. Love it. So that it pops up every Friday, you know, nine to yep. 11, phone calls right. or Emails letters or letters. whatever it is right. every week because if it's not on my schedule I used to say if it's not on my schedule it's like it never happened Doesn't and it's never exist. gonna happen. right right so I have got to put that um, in there yes. and, and 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 the thing is too if you're like a lot of us when you put something in your schedule that you don't really want to do, there will be mm -hmm. times that you will blow right by it. You will just be like, eh, okay. Oh. But I doubt that you will because you no. seeing what happens when you don't consistently you build. Don't. A, right? Exactly. Right. This exactly. is like, this is real for you. This is like really, really, really real. Yeah. This yeah. is, you know, th from 3 million to, you know, under this 200 is, is not. I'm not going to make any money this year. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking I'm not going to make any money this year. And I'm very grateful that I had a cushion in my bank account that's going to get me through this, mm -hmm. um, hopefully. I mean, because I can't imagine this is going to go on forever. But it's really the, one of the most terrifying things that's ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. And on our boardroom call that we just had um, this past week, you know, we're talking about this with a bunch of people in the same situation. And I'm sure there are tons of designers out there mm -hmm. that experience this roller coaster, you know, mm -hmm. everything's great and you're so busy and your head's down and you're working hard. And then, you know, you pick your head up and you're like, Oh, <laughs> where'd everybody go? <laughs> so I'm going to organize my office now. You know, I mean, it's just, what do you, you just, it's something that you're not really prepared for. And then it happens and you feel like a failure, but you're not, you just didn't do one simple thing that most people that go to college in study marketing understand right. that you have to do it. You right. have to do it. No, it's so true. It's, um, and the thing is there's, you know, I give you a lot of credit for being honest with all of us here and sharing it because to your point, I know that there are hundreds of designers listening right now that have are either in this exact moment or have been there or will maybe possibly avoid it because you're mm -hmm. sharing this, Elisa. Oh, you know what I I'm saying? I hope they do. Yeah. I no, I, I know it, it yeah. to be true. I know it yeah. to be true. And yeah. the thing is, is that, you know, I often like tongue in cheek will like make fun of my husband, but he, mm -hmm. I mean, he's a lunatic. He's an actual, I mean, he is, but I have, but you need him. To yes, keep it's it going, the truth. You know? And this is the thing I have learned that, I could have easily been a, a business owner like this at a young, a younger age. I mm -hmm. easily could have. And that's why I think that I'm able to ask the questions that's in your head. I'm able mm -hmm. to empathize where you are because I know that that could have been me at a mm -hmm. young age as mm -hmm. an entrepreneur if mm -hmm. I did not have him and he mm -hmm. and so now I own it it's you know I'm, I'm older than dirt and I get it and it, I've learned the lessons <laughs> and all of those things not older than me but, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing about it is is that you you have to learn it somewhere. And yeah. so if you're yeah. lucky, you learn it when you're young, like I was able to. And if you're not, the point is that if it's coming to you at this season of your life, 19 years mm -hmm. in, I know you're mm -hmm. going to come through it. And you just said something a moment ago, I'm, I'm probably not going to make money this year. And I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you, Elisa, there is mm -hmm. six months left of this year. I know. You're I right. would not count you out of that race. I would not. I, I really would not because the things, if you keep doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. it's going to all of a sudden, it's going to open up. Right. Yeah. And, and I don't know. I know you say that you listen to the show and I don't know if you ever heard me talk about in the beginning when we were building window works. 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was no, like, put a post on Facebook. Right. You know, right, like, right. you had to yeah. put an ad in the newspaper. And, right. you know, right. I remember very distinctly, it was $749 to put an ad in the Star uh -huh. Ledger. And wow, it, that's expensive. It was insanely expensive then. <laughs> we were like, what? Like, yeah. are you kidding me? Right? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, we could only afford to do it in the beginning, the first year, one day a month. One okay. day a month, and yeah. we would be like, "Oh my goodness, is the phone going to ring? Is the phone going to ring? Is the phone going to ring?" <laughs> and we would schedule to be in on the Wednesday, so we didn't miss any phone call. You know, la la la. Uh, but the thing is, you know, because my husband is a lunatic, it wasn't yeah. like, "Well, okay, well, let's wait till next month on Wednesday. Maybe we'll get some leads." And the way, right. how did I do it? I took the door knockers and I went running because I was a runner before my stupid hip mm -hmm. got arthritis in it, right? And oh. I would run, and I had to put out. I would in my had to. I had a goal of putting out 100 door knockers a day because wow. I knew for every 25 I put uh -huh. out I had the our, our metric was if we put out 25 maybe we would get one call right and so sometimes you put out a hundred and get nothing. And yeah. sometimes you put out a hundred the next day and get nothing. But then mm -hmm. sometimes on the fourth day you'd get five phone calls. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so it's a it's a snow it's a snowballing effect, and you are in that stage now where you're yep. building it. And so right. keep your contacts with your realtors, keep your contacts yep. with your architects, doors and communication wide open. And you know what? It's going to happen. It could be it it could be August, it could be September, and you'll get like three jobs in the pipeline. Yep. You'll be like boom, no, be back amazing. alive. And I know. And the thing that makes me feel so good is that when I do get those jobs, I know yes. exactly where all of my, you know, my systems are and yes. my processes are. And I have it all kind of nailed down. We now have a great process for our whole, our whole design meeting process where we've got it down to four meetings. It's very clear. It's all very spelled out. I just, I That's feel like awesome. it's, this time has been such a blessing mm. um, in disguise. Yes. And I'm sure I will feel much more about it, like it's a blessing. When, <laughs> when you're looking in the rear view mirror at it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like next year. But I, um, I just think, you know, if, if, if you ever do have downtime, it's, that's your moment. That's your window mm -hmm. to at least get started with all the stuff that you're going to continue. Because right. – it's so hard when you're running, you know, full speed ahead to sort of try and change your tires. And if you, that's mixing my metaphors, but you know what I mean? No, it's there, true, it's right? Just, I get it. Um, it just, you need that break sometimes to just say, all right, you know what? I need a welcome binder for my clients. It spells out everything about how we work, what the rules are. It's got a copy of their letter of agreement. We've got a special gift that we give, you know, all those things that we all talk about. Right, um, that you wanted to do, that you thought right. would be a great idea to do. <laughs> Right. And now it's like, you know, we have a, we have it all set up. We have a template for that. We have a system for that. We know what we buy, what our gift is. It used to be, you know, we always sent out something for birthdays, but we never had a consistent thing. So the, my business manager would turn to me like a couple of days before, Oh, it's so-and-so's birthday. What do you want to do? And I'd be like in the middle of something. I'm like, I don't know. I don't care. Yeah. Right. Like and get then, a Starbucks gift certificate. And you're like, wait, yeah, wait, exactly. did I say you that out what? loud for their birthday? Yeah, I know. And now we're like, you know what? It's flowers. This is the florist. This is what we ask for. This is what we do. And it's done, you yes. know, and that's how it goes. So I love it. And here's what's going to happen. Because, like I said, I did start to say, I don't know if I finished the thought, you are in extreme crisis mode now. There's no yeah. doubt. Nobody could underestimate it. But you're not sitting with your, you know, in a puddle of mud and crying and you are actually working through it and you are coming out stronger for it. And imagine now, imagine this, this whole sweet spot that you is in front of you. You mm -hmm. are actively marketing in multiple different Different ways you are going to have 5,000 seeds out there that are going to bring back, you know, 10, 12, 15 amazing projects. Okay. And mm -hmm. you are going to have the infrastructure to run all of these right. projects that are going right. to hit you at the same time. Well, that would be awesome. That's what's going to happen. I just, okay. I, I, I actually, I, I agree with you. I think that, you know, we put stuff out in the universe mm -hmm. and we do things for ourselves, for mm -hmm. other people and things come back to you. And I do believe that, 
it will. It will be okay. And I'm hoping that they all come. Mm -hmm. Maybe not at the exact same time, but yes, I but feel you're going to be prepared for, the for the first it. time. I feel prepared. Yeah. I mean, my whole business career. I have never felt prepared. I've always been the one, you know, on the job site, like calling back to the office. Can you send me the floor plan for, right, you know, I got blah, blah, here blah. That. Right, yeah. right. And now it's all in Google Docs. It's all organized. We've got, you know, every client, there's schematics, there's images. It's all right there. So I now have the tools to, to run every project, like, in the cleanest way possible, whereas I used to just be, you know, right. I don't even know how. Too busy to pan. do it. Yeah, just, just yeah. so busy mm -hmm. getting it done because you're smart and because you're talented, but not getting it done in, from a place of empowerment. Exactly. And organization. Right. And I think that, you know, I tend to be a little bit, I'm the person that designs and I have things all over the place and I'm throwing fabrics and samples and blah, blah, blah. And then it, might, it looks like a tornado hit right. my room. But um, I think that that always was frustrating for me in the business life because I just, that's how my head felt when it came to the business and the project. And now it just feels, you can do that with design, that's fine, but not when you're running the business. The business has to be completely 100% buttoned up. Right, and right. I feel like and I like that you yeah. learned that you, what your strengths are and that what your second in command strengths are because, yes. you know, when we are the person that is the visionary and we are not the one that is linear and that really mm -hmm. has the details and all of that stuff, I know from personal experience that when when I drop balls like that because mm -hmm. those details have been left to me to do or I have mm -hmm. said I'm the only one that can do those details, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to drop those balls. Mm -hmm. That's the simple mm -hmm. fact of it. Yeah. I am because it's not my superpower. I have yes. no skill set for that. And I yes. have to tell you, my cousin Eileen, who is in yes. my new book and was yes. at Luann Live. I love Live, your book, by the way. Thank you. I thank you. Are, right aren't they away. rock stars, what these That's people have put together? Book. Yeah, I'm it so is. proud of, of what they have accomplished and what they've shared with us um, mm -hmm. but what the thing is she's the one who said to me stop it yep. this should never be on your plate yes, this is 100%. not what you're good at and that you need exactly. somebody near you, around you, that loves this detail, that loves these weeds, and that loves it. She said, Luann, you are the freight train. You have mm -hmm. to run through the place. You rain make. You do all of your stuff. You get everybody mm -hmm. inspired. You get everybody molded. You get everybody seeing the vision. She goes, you are not the one to get in the weeds. And until she gave me permission, I was mm -hmm. constantly like, why can't I do everything? Right, why can right. I not do that part well, because I just thought I was being lazy or I just wouldn't take accountability or I just would be like pushing it to the curb. And of course, it's not to say that I don't do all of those things at some point in my day, right. my week or right. my month. Right. But right. there were just certain things that she was just like, she literally said to me, I'm looking at your personality profile. This is, <laughs> Luann, this is like saying, why can't I play, you know, basketball with the right. Sixers? You're yes. never going to do this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you might think you can and you might actually get out on the court, but it's right. going to be a disaster. You're so don't do it. You're never going to slam dunk that ball, you oh, know. No. And so oh. so what I love is that you not only have organized your business, you have taken assessment of where your strengths are. You have a person right next to you that has the opposite superpower strengths. Yes, and, exactly. You know, Elisa, I'm going to go on a limb here because mm -hmm. I have over the years on the podcast, you know, here and there talk to you guys about my inner goddess voice my yes. intuition voice and uh -huh. i this goddess voice is so real for me I, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't go down the woo-woo lane with you guys a lot because I'm not sure how many would keep staying in tune, okay? And be no, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm so with you here. Okay. I'm on your, your bus. Okay, yep, I and, you. and I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I, mm -hmm. I know you are going to be so, like you are going to marvel 
at your success. If it's if it mm-hmm. has to be one year from now, I'm okay yep. with that. But I know yep. that by the by the end of 2019, if you mm-hmm. haven't already turned the corner fully, you're going to see the turn in the corner fully. Yes. I know it. Yes. And I and it's I, uh... and it's not and it's just it's not just and this is where I'm going to be very, you know, crazy pants here. It's not mm-hmm. just because on paper I objectively see what you're doing. It's because mm-hmm. I feel it. I know it. Yeah. And I feel like I I feel it too, which is why Great. although my, my my heart is beating very fast mm-hmm. and I'm not sleeping well, I do I feel good and I feel like everyone who is who is in the same situation who is doing everything they can, they will see it pay off. Mm-hmm. Like you just it just works. You 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 know what has to happen. You write it down. You like put on your big girl panties and you like mm-hmm. make those phone calls or you know if you're a chicken like me you text them. Mm-hmm. But you just you it's do okay. it and then yeah, baby and steps. Then it is baby steps and it just I feel like you get rewarded for that. I mm-hmm. think you know you can't just sit around and go oh when is the phone gonna ring? It just you can't mm-hmm. and you know because the phone eventually will stop ringing. I mean, I think it just does for everybody. There was no reason. There was nothing nothing I did wrong. I mean, right. yeah, the economy isn't so great, you know, whatever, but the, people are still moving out here. Right. Houses are still being sold. Right. I don't know There's who There's still they're people hiring. that have bought $4 are, million dollar houses in right. the last six months. Right, right. Exactly. exactly. And, and I just, all of a sudden, it's just, and it can happen to anybody, I think. You're just cruising along and then wham, mm-hmm. unless you're being proactive and like being a real business owner and a real CEO, which mm-hmm. just means you have to do all this business stuff. And that's not even, (laughs) that's not even taking into account, like posting on Facebook and posting on Instagram, both of which I have outsourced by the way, because it makes me crazy, but it's just so much stuff that we as designers have to do that has nothing to do with interior design, but yet is equally important. Right. Well, and the truth is here's the big scary, you know, news. It's every business. Mm You know, Mm -hmm. I don't care if you own a bakery Mm -hmm. shop or you own an interior design firm, you know, you get to do the part that you love 20% of the time. And if you don't do the 80% hard part, you don't get to do the 20% fun part. It's as simple as that. And, 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 and it's a come to Jesus moment to learn it. And here's one more thing I'll share with you is Mm -hmm. that I often also talk about my aunt honey on the show and she Mm -hmm. was also at Luann live and she's Eileen's mom. Okay. Uh Um, and one of the things that she taught me very young when I was going through something that was insanely painful painful and Mm -hmm. I was very 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 challenged by it Mm -hmm. and she looked at me at one point and she said you know all the lovely things that you know the aunt that you love says to you I'm sorry Mm -hmm. for your pain and all of this other thing and then she said to me she said but Lou I want you to look for your lesson in this And Mm, she said, mm -hmm. and I know that in the middle of this right now, it might feel hard because Mm -hmm. you're so enveloped in the pain. She said, but if you can put your head up at least once a day and just say to yourself, what is my lesson in this? And she said, you might learn it today. You might Mm -hmm. learn it tomorrow. You might Mm -hmm. not identify the lesson until when you're well past your crisis. She Mm -hmm. said, but that's what you're looking for and the simple fact is is you've already learned your lesson in this your yeah. lesson is you need to be marketing every single week not yes. only when your pipeline's not full yep. and you need to have your business locked down and prepared 100%. for the clients to come through so i love so it right. i love it elisa and and it is so it is so valuable cuz for me it takes my brain off of the 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 crisis it takes my mm-hmm. brain out of yes, freeze mode exactly. it takes exactly. my brain it's a there's a freeze mode when when you're you know we're not talking about hey you know i'm down ten thousand in sales this month i mean this is mm-hmm. crisis full-on mm-hmm. crisis and mm-hmm. so there's mm-hmm. a, a a tendency that you could be locked up in freeze mode and <laughs> just exactly like prone on the floor yes. like yes, absolutely exactly 100%. and when you just like that little line it's like you know what's so funny is because when sometimes when i make fun of myself i I like I liken it to, you know, Tara, there'll be another day. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> and I'll be like totally in a puddle of mud and I'll be like yep. Luann, what is your yeah. lesson in this, honey? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and other times I'm like, Luann, what's your lesson? You know, so it all depends on the mood I'm in. I know. But and I, you know what, what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it just has to hit you really, really hard. I mean, I have, you know, for years I'd been toying with business coaches and reading books and doing things. And then just something inside me was just like 
because this it started in June. I think it, now that I, you know, my timing, I'm so flaky and out of it about time. But I think it was the summer, last summer, when I went to my first Genius Exchange with oh, okay. um, with Gail, and then started in the fall with the um, coaching and the and the group. But something hit me then that made it that made me realize I needed to do this mm-hmm. now. You listen like, to your it was, voice. It was there. There was something in there. It was like, okay, now, you know, they, you can, you know, they say you can just say something over and over and over again to someone and until they're mm-hmm. ready to hear it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sink in. doesn't mean anything. Well, all of a sudden I was ready to hear it. And I wish that, you know, I had been ready years ago because I would have been, you know, in a very different place. It but, all happens the way it's supposed to happen. Yes, it all right. happens the way it's supposed to happen that mm-hmm. you have to trust as long as you're mm-hmm. always doing your best and always eyes wide open and always doing things for positive for not just yourself, but for right. every person you touch, then right. things happen the way they're supposed to happen. Yep. That's it. So, you well, know, you're good. Sure. So it, came to me, it came to me, whatever, 18 years in, I was like, ding, 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 you yeah, know, got to yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, I'm so happy for you, although I, it sounds crazy to say, but I know that you're learning tremendous lessons, that you are going to be 10 times stronger than you and ever, ever could have dreamed of being. And mm-hmm. I want you to think about hitting me up in like April, May of next year and tell okay. me that how this all has, you know, I know you're going to come on and tell me, my God, then this and this I and this might and this. do that. Yeah. That's my plan. Yeah. And that I would may be see very valuable. Before, yep. So. That would be very valuable for okay. all of us. And, all and right. Elisa, thank you. Thank you for being you're willing welcome. to have the conversation. It was my great pleasure to get to know oh. you. Thank you, Lillian. I really appreciate talking to you. I really do. I love listening to you. It's great help. Serious courage. Don't you agree? Not only the courage to come on the show. I mean, that's pretty amazing into itself to come on the show and talk about a current situation that you are experiencing. But how about the courage to simply stand up every day and push forward in something like this big? I know. I, 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 I'm I amazed and I am so grateful. And I have to say that is the huge takeaway from this show for me that Elisa is looking in the mirror. She is acknowledging her part in this turn in her business. She's reflecting on it and she's saying, you know what, I have to say, I've actually in 19 years never marketed my business before. And she's not saying, and why do I have to do it now? What's the deal? You know, she's saying, okay, you know what? Universe, loud and clear. I've got to get on the stick and I've got to market. Okay. So I really, really love this uh, aspect of what Elisa's approach is. And I should say by love, I mean admire. And by love, I mean, I give major kudos to her. And by love, I mean, I cannot praise Elisa enough that she's not blaming this downturn in her business on anyone else. She's not saying, oh, it's the economy. She's not saying no one in Rye wants full service design anymore. She's not saying the internet ruined my business. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. She is taking full responsibility and she is powering through and pushing through her comfort zone and doing things in her business that she has never needed to do before in order to create more clients in her pipeline. And I just have to say that is just outstanding. Okay. And the thing is that the other lesson in this show, in my opinion, is that it is so important to understand that you are going to have setbacks in your business journey. Okay. She's 19 years. She might've thought, Hey, I skated by, I'm good. Like I thought it was hard in the beginning and I've been through all that. Mm -mm. All right. So some of the setbacks that you may face may be the really hairy, scary kind like Elisa is going through now. And others might be a truly that one time you haven't had it yet in your business. That one really, really, truly unhappy, unsatisfied single client. Okay. That is just making your hair stand on its end. It's going to happen. You're not going to escape being an entrepreneur unscathed. Okay. It's simply not realistic to think it will always be rosy. 
Okay. It's kind of like looking at your, if you've ever had a little baby or you've been ever an aunt or an uncle to a single little newborn baby. And you're just thinking, oh my goodness, you're just the sweetest thing. You are just never going to sass me your whole life. (laughs) And you know, when you're an experienced parent, you're like, um, get ready. Like, you know, those parents like, I won't have that. (laughs) It's like, okay. (laughs) All right. You got to get ready for that crazy ride. And that's why what owning a business is. It's a crazy ride. The good, the bad, the bad, the amazing, the horrible. You have to have the stomach for it. And you more importantly, you must just as Elisa is doing, you absolutely must take ownership of every single process. And therefore, you get to take ownership of every single outcome. And that's the awesome part. Okay, now, I'd like for you to do me a favor right now. I'd like for you to just take a quick moment. I mean, even if you're driving, whatever you're doing, and just for a second or two, send some white light to Elisa. Give her a virtual hug. Send her some positive energy. Visualize success for her. Now, you don't even have to know what she looks like. Know what you think she looks like from her voice. It's good enough. The universe gets it. Okay. Then I want you to take another second and project yourself into next year and imagine yourself listening to Elisa on the show telling us about the complete turnaround of her business and all of the additional lessons that she's learned from going through this and the hindsights that she's going to share with us that will help you next year avoid some of the things that she's experiencing. Okay. She helped us today. Send her some love and some help back. I hope you'll do that with me. All righty. Now, by the time you are listening to this, Las Vegas market summer 2019 is in the can. It's done, right? By now, I've already enjoyed the most excellent day with my Power Talk Friday experts and the designer attendees who I'm sure by now are busy back at work implementing all the ahas that they had in our epic day together. I want to thank each of those interior designers for coming and for investing your money, your time into your business and entrusting it with me. Okay. And I also want to thank my experts, the Vin Man, Nancy Ganskoffer, Eileen Hahn, and Stacey McKenna for always bringing 100% to everything they do. Now, if you're already sorry that you missed out, have no fear. We are bringing Power Talk Friday Tour to High Point Market, October 2019. Okay. The date is Friday. October 18th. The slate of experts is always killer, I know, but this slate is going to feature The Vin Man, Nicole Heimer of Curio Electro, branding expert extraordinaire, um, Kay Whitaker, who is our digital marketing queen, Peter Lang, the designer CPA. These are the people that are going to be with me in High Point. So OMG, that's all I can say. And if you want in, go to powertalkfriday.com for info. Okay. Powertalkfriday.com. The event is going to be Friday, October 18th, 2019. So make sure you make your plane and your hotel reservations accordingly. All right. Now there is so much coming up in the fall that it's a little insane. That's all I can say. I'm just going to run down them and I'm going to tell you that you always can find all of this information on my website. But just let's just take a little sampling of the things that you can places that you can find me and we can connect and we can meet each other. So first of all, we've got the Sales for Creatives will launch the fall. Um, We've got our summer session well underway and we've got three people, I believe, already signed up for the fall session and the summer is going outstanding. I'm loving the group of designers that we have there and if you're interested in getting in for the fall, please go and find the information on that. Next, I'm going to be in Boston uh, with with Kravit at the Kravit showroom talking with Jan Showers. I'm also going to be in Portland presenting to the Portland IDS chapter. I'm going to be in Pennsylvania with Vita presenting demystifying window treatments for interior designers. I will also be presenting in Connecticut with the Schwartz Design Showroom and the Trade Coalition up there. I'm also going to be presenting at the IDS New Jersey chapter. Um, and I'm also going to be getting the Lunch and Learns for Window Works back and running. Okay. Back 
back up and running and with our newly redesigned showroom, okay? And of course, at High Point, I'll be leading several panel discussions. I don't know. How can you keep it all straight? I can't keep it all straight. I think the best thing to do is that you should be on my email list, don't you? So this is what you do. You text the number 444-999, and then you put in the text box, Design Biz. No caps, no spaces. Design Biz. I mean, here's the thing. It's important to be on the email list because I had probably two or three people Literally two days, one one was six days, one was eight days that reached out to me, emailed me. We ended up getting on a phone call and they wanted to be part of the Power Talk Friday tour in Las Vegas, but they had only heard about it in that last week. And two of them said to me, I've already looked at airfare and I'm going to tell you what, if it weren't as ridiculously stupid in saying that it is, I would have been there. And so this is the thing. I know that you're not always listening to podcasts in order in real time, but the email list is always going to get the latest information. So text the word design biz, no caps, no spaces to 444-999. The number is 444-999. I think I'm going to have to sign up for it too, just so I know where to show up each week. I'm just saying. (laughs) All righty. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate so much that you take the time to listen to the episodes and that you share your thoughts with me through social media. And um, it's just awesome. It really, really, really is. And, you know, I have to say, um, you often reach out to the different guests that have been on the show and and share your insights and your lessons and your gratitude with them, too. And I know every single guest on the show appreciates that. So thank you, thank you for what you do in helping me bring this to you. Um, But, you know, I do have to keep you accountable. And is there something that you learned from today's episode? Did you learn that, whoa, maybe I'm in business two or five or 10 years and I really have just been relying on my referral pipeline too? Um, mm -hmm, I got to get on that. And the truth is, you know, you can rely on your referrals to keep your pipeline built, but you can't just let them sit there. You have to do some email marketing to them. You have to do something. You have to do some snail mail marketing to them. You have to do something. So I don't know, maybe that's your lesson for today and that's your to-do item, your action item. I hope it is. I hope something in here sparked you to move because you know how desperately I need you to decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.